Hi beautiful souls, it's Mona here. I hope you had a lovely weekend. And in today's video, I want to answer the question from Carmen uh, Jensea. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Please forgive me if not. Um, and Carmen asks, I'm confused who my twin flame is and how to know who your twin flame is really. So let me offer some viewpoints um, coming from my personal experience and also having worked with over hundreds of women now from around the world. I can tell you that um, there are some really distinct signs that help you establish whether or not you are on the path of sacred union and if so, how to or if you have met your beloved. Now, if you are truly on the path of sacred union, there will be something from within you, from the depths of your soul that will want to come into wholeness and will be guiding you to seek that sort of beautiful divine partnership in your own life. You will be unconsciously looking for that, uh, probably in every romantic relationship that you, you, know, you will be in, you have been in, you are in. You will be looking for this sacred union, this divine partnership where you feel like you've arrived, you are whole, you're at home. And that this divine partner is also your greatest mirror. Your soul will be guiding you to, towards that, will be asking you to find the, of what they often refer to as the one. I have very sort of different opinion on the one, but let me share, you know, what my experience has been. So... First of all, so there is that a soul calling within you, like I've just mentioned, that will be telling you, guiding you that you are on a path of sacred union. Secondly, they will come, you will come to a point in your life where you will be yearning, uh, yearning, really yearning from the depths of your soul to meet a divine partner, your beloved. And initially that yearning often stems from um, a part of a wound, woundedness, wounded sort of experiences in our life, woundedness around love. Um, oftentimes I find that people who are truly on the path of sacred union, they haven't really felt um, held, nurtured, loved, deeply cherished as children. So they have this, this core wound around abandonment, around rejection, around um you know, having felt that they have, they were not lovable, they were not loved the way they desired. And while this is within all of us to some extent, among twin flames, this core wound of abandonment, rejection, and, and not loved, not enough, is actually very pronounced, very significant. So as and when you you recognize that this that you are truly on a path of sacred union that you have felt you, your whole life like you are on this you you know you are here to to do something big to be on like big mission and when i say big mission it doesn't mean you know this grandiose you know status um being it's more to do with the with the in depth and intensity of what this twin flame mission is surely all about. I'm because when you look at the world from the spiritual standpoint, there is nothing really, nothing, nothing greater in this world, no greater mission than coming into wholeness within yourself and then be able to share that with everyone around you because you are effectively uplifting your own vibration. And through that uplifting humanity, uplifting the energy of the earth. So it is a big mission. It is a just healing yourself, just coming into wholeness and balance within you is a huge mission. And um, this is why you have the deep yearning within you to come into wholeness, because we often seek wholeness through relating with someone else. If we feel that we have been... Um, you know, robbed of love and with our children, we have that wound within us and we seek to fill that void initially, you know, when we are unconscious and unawakened, we seek to fill that void through a relationship with another. And the same applies to polarity aspects. So for example, if I 
Um, uh, to give an example in my own life, I was brought up in a very masculine energy, in a very kind of masculine environment where the feminine energy was very suppressed. And um, my whole life, I admired artists, creatives. I wanted to be one of them, but I had this unconscious limitation. I didn't believe I'm allowed, that it's possible for me. Because my whole life, my parents and society and culture sort of hammered into me that to succeed in life you got to be practical you got to be logical you got to be um you know just pursuing um a type of career that actually uh, is acceptable accepted in this world so career and business that will help you survive and my whole life my parents hammered this into me so i was completely disconnected from my feminine energy, even though I wanted to be an artist, I wanted to be a creative, I wanted to just, um, for me, that's play and joy and happiness to create. And um, I was also quite big on kind of understanding psychology, human behavior, and I really wanted to work in that right sort of brain um, environment where people do focus on human behavior, understanding of that, healing, you know, nurturing relationships and and um you know understanding psychology behavior subconscious you know or patterns and all of that but like i said my whole childhood my parents told me no you that's not gonna help that you're not gonna survive like that you've got to study business you've got to study marketing so i was completely disconnected from my feminine energy and um I was always seeking to be in partnership with someone who was more feminine, who was more, who was more of a creative, creative type, artist, creator. But it was unconscious. It was coming from the depths of my soul, whereas my logical mind kept telling me, "No, you gotta, you gotta find someone who's successful, who's organized, who's logical, who is, um, you know, who's got his life in control and sorted." So you kind of, you have to understand that you often follow the prescribed, the logical path, the, the nudges and instructions from your parents because you don't want to upset anyone, you want to people please. But it will come to a point in your life where you realize like, oh my God, that doesn't work for me anymore. I just want to be honest and truth, truthful to myself. And that's where you start to wake up a little bit to understand that, oh, hold on a minute, maybe, maybe I don't need to please my parents so much. Maybe I can just do my own thing. And that's how I started to, you know, gradually wake up in my own life, little by little. And I want to shed some light on how different connections come into your life to actually help you awaken deeper and further into your, you know, ascension and, and, and take you into your ascension. So I have met... Um, in 2011, I have met this guy through work who was incredibly creative and very passionate about um, psychology, understanding human behavior, you know, and, and he kind of activated something within me without even me, you know, wanting or asking for it or anything. And this is what they often kind of call the catalyst, the, the false twin flame. There is no such thing, by the way, but they call it a catalyst because he often catalyzes that sacral chakra, your creative center, your feminine center. And um, this also comes with sort of noticing for the first time your feelings, your emotions, noticing that you are a woman or you're feminine in part of your energy. Um, noticing that you have certain desires, you have sexual preferences, that certain things turn you on. It sort of it's re- pretty much activating your sexual center, the intimacy, love, creativity. You know, noticing your feelings. Uh, but oftentimes, this type of connection, the, the 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 catalysts, you know, they are not meant to be your life partner because they are just catalyzing a part of your energy that has been dormant. Um, for obvious reasons, in my case, dormant because in my entire childhood, I have been groomed to bury that those desires, those needs to be connected to my feminine. I have been it hasn't been nurtured within me, so I have basically abandoned that within me unconsciously. And when I met him, 
just being around this guy, you know, we worked together and it was a beautiful connection. We were friends, but I felt this deep awakening within my sacral chakra, the feminine awakening within me. And I, I, it was intensive. I was going crazy for a few months meaning in terms of crazy I didn't I didn't know what was happening within me I've had such a turmoil inside of me noticing suddenly all these feelings that were repressed and dormant these desires these womanly desires even desires for sexual pleasure that have been dormant within me because I have literally buried them disconnected from that feminine energy completely so th this is um often the reason why some twin flames meet the catalyst first before they meet their true twin flame and you know when you meet your true, true twin flame is when you have a soul recognition when you have a heart center awakening heart center very different from the awakening of your sacral chakra the sexual pleasure and desire because when you meet your the catalyst you often find that they are just meant to awaken you and then they leave and completely vanish out of your life and don't want to have anything to do with you. They kind of often call it unrequited love because you have these feelings, this intensity and you, you, you know, within you and you project that onto that catalyst. You want them to be that love in your life, but they often leave because their job was just to awaken your feminine you know, your pleasure, your sacral chakra, your sexual drive, your sexual desires, your intimacy center, your creativity. And I know within me, after meeting this man, my creativity and the right brain side of me has literally shot through the roof. And I started pursuing career that was much more in alignment with my heart, with myself. It has shifted me to a whole new level of consciousness, understanding myself and my life. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful for this man. Um, and um, I didn't think much of it. A few months later after our meeting, the, the intensity sort of died down because I have integrated it and upgraded my energy. And, you know, he, I moved on to another job. I complete, he completely vanished out of my life. We were just friends anyway. And you know, it sort of, that connection has done its job and completely vanished out of my life. And I no longer had that sort of desire to be around that person in any way. But what happened then, I, it's actually quite funny because my stories are uh, around, um, I've met my twin flame through my work. So I actually hired him onto my team. I've, met, I've then joined another company. I was headhunted. And the entire sequence of events was very synchronistic. Like they were meant to, I was applying for a, for one role and they've given me a completely different job like two days before starting where I suddenly, I was expected to have a team. And um, this is how I met my twin flame. I've actually, I needed a position to be filled within my team and I, I, you know, advertise and he came for an interview and I actually hired him for the role. And um, very soon after or I started working together, I began realizing all these signs and synchronicities and my my whole being, especially my heart started to awaken. And I was starting to experience like deep soul remembrance and recognition. And many lifetimes we've been together flashed in front of my eyes I was very overprotective of, of him initially. And when I was still in my masculine energy, I didn't understand why, why I have this connection to this guy. I was running from it. I was like, oh my God, no, no, no. This is weird. I'm his boss. I cannot have these feelings. This is wrong. And I was, I felt shame. I felt like confused. And, but more than anything, my heart center awakened it was like an explosion within my heart. I started to have Kundalini awakening literally from the bottom of my spine, like this fire rising. And my whole being started to shift and change and awaken. And I sustained sort of that relationship of working together for uh, probably about a year before I I just couldn't anymore. And I, I felt... Um, I had, I had to get out. I had to get, I couldn't be in his presence anymore because it was so intense. My, my heart opening, 
I started to like remembering who I am and what my soul mission is, what my soul purpose is. And then we um, kind of went into separation, which is normally what happens with your twin flame because you need that time to focus on yourself, on your healing and integration to come into your sovereign self before you can be reunited. And, and actually, uh, during that time of separation, you both are doing work on yourself to be able to ground ground this divine love into the third dimension it's on you know grounded onto this physical earth plane it's not an easy task it's actually you know depending on how much trauma you've got in your system it can be very challenging um oftentimes you also find yourself running even though you're thinking i really want this connection but you're unconsciously running because there is a polarity in place so you might think a uh, physical looking at the situation that all oh, your twin flame is running from you but the truth is very often you are the codependent one and you're running from yourself so he's just mirroring to you your level your inner state of being and how do you know let me move on to finally answering the question sorry about kind of um the long story but i felt it was important to illustrate how and why you may meet a catalyst before you meet your true twin flame and the difference between meeting a catalyst who only awakens your sacral chakra that is the pleasure center intimacy center your feminine energy your desire uh, you know to be in love to be in true divine love and that fizzles out that sort of dissipates and disappears out of your life and a few months later you 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 don't even care about that person you have no feelings for him you you integrated you shifted you upgraded your your consciousness your energy and you are a different person and oftentimes that's when you actually go on meeting your true twin flame who then activates your heart center this is the soul recognition that nobody else out there talks about when you meet your twin flame, he activates your heart, you at the heart center, your heart chakra begins to open. And this is how you know that you have met your true twin flame. Um, your mirror, the greatest sort of um, mirror that you will ever, ever have in this physical reality. Um, they mirror you, they mirror your wounded aspects, your shadow aspects. Uh, as well as your light and creativity and they are really you know the 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 divine partner that you're meant to be with but you you may have to do quite a bit of work to be able to um feel aligned within yourself sovereign strong whole integrated within yourself before that connection is even available to you because the twin flames share the same energetic field and um for that very reason, just being in each other's presence, it, it can be incredibly intense and very, you know, very strong. So you've got to be integrated, balanced and whole to be able to be around your twin flame. And sometimes when you have just integrated, a, you know, a part of your yourself, they come in, they, they, you know, you have a lovely time. They, again, mirror something else to you another another level and then they leave give you giving you space and time to integrate it and come into another level of wholeness within you and sometimes that repeats several times before you actually are um willing to surrender enough so that you see only love so that you no longer your choices decisions desires needs are no longer driven by fear by unmet childhood needs but you are now operating from a place of integrated sovereign sort of wholeness consciousness of of um union with self that is then projected from your partner onto you and you can be together in the physical so i hope this answers your question so to summarize how you know whether you've met your true twin flame you know if you've had a heart center awakening a soul recognition with that person your heart is the seat of your soul and it, this is you know your twin flame mirrors that that um your energy to you and you basically you you it, there is this sort of um point of um 
ecstasy when you meet where you finally recognize yourself in another in in another's body in another but you have to understand that your the physical body of your twin flame that's not who your twin flame is it, it's the soul you recognize within him that is your twin flame and sometimes the physical twin flame may not be able to ground the connection within the third dimensional reality and in the next video i will explain why and and i will also go into my personal theory as to what i have seen happening having worked with hundreds and hundreds of women what i have seen happening around the world is that if the twin flame the physical body of the twin flame isn't able to ground the connection within the external within the third dimensional reality very often times that energy is transferred onto someone else someone else who is able to come into your life and mirror you on your new level of consciousness and be your life partner and it doesn't mean that this new person is anything less or worse or different it's just it's just different and again that person will come into your life to serve a purpose to help you awaken further deepen your you know your inner work integrate other aspects they will guarantee they will trigger you too it won't be like a easy plain sailing connection but um they will trigger you too and i will talk in the next video why some twin flames end up being married to different partners and how this serves a purpose so if this is you stay tuned i will be coming live uh, or uploading videos pre-recorded videos that i have been able to shoot in my spare time to help you answer these twin flame questions and come into greater balance within yourself so um join me in my facebook group called ascension mastery where i will be posting these videos a little tips healing posts um, to help you navigate your ascension journey with much more ease and grace and enable you to come into greater balance and that wholeness that you seek um you know to embody that from within you first before they can be mirrored to you from the external reality by your divine partner so i'm sending you so much love peace and joy let me know if you have any questions about this particular video let me know if you have met your catalyst what it was like let me know if you have met your true twin flame when was that and where are you at in your in your divine um, journey I'm sending you so much love, peace and joy and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Namaste.